Welcome to Westward Expansion Manifest Destiny, 1836 to 1853. Okay, the first quote about Manifest Destiny that we go back to in American history is from John O'Sullivan. And he says, And that claim is by the right of our Manifest Destiny to overspread and to possess the whole of the continent which Providence has given us for the development of of the great experiment of liberty and federated self-government entrusted to us. The imagery that we often associate with Manifest Destiny comes from a painting by Emanuel Lutz, Westward the Course of Empire, and one that you're more familiar with, American Progress, by John Gast. Yeah, we spend a lot of time, 6th grade, 7th grade, breaking this image down. Again, you have New York City over here on the right. You have trains expanding westward. She's bringing civilization with her. She's bringing the telegraph lines. The pioneers are moving around at the bottom. They're moving west. And what's being pushed west are Native Americans and Buffalo. And she's moving towards the mountains. And specifically, these look much more like the Rockies than the Appalachians. And so this lady that we talk about this is a lady um, that shows up in a lot of places that you guys often don't think about it. She is a female personification of the United States of America. And her name is Lady Columbia. You might know her from a certain movie company called Columbia, Columbia Pictures. And so Lady Columbia shows up in our history a lot as a female personification. Uncle Sam is a male personification of the United States. She shows up in World War I and World War II uh, in big bond campaigns. And in terms of political reasons, there's the belief that the United States was destined to stretch from the West Coast, okay, from the East Coast to the West Coast, from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. There's political, economic, social, and even theological roots to Manifest Destiny. And James K. Polk, as president, would be the president that we would most associate with Manifest Destiny. And so under Polk, during this time, you will see the expansion. We're not going to cover all the expansion in this PowerPoint. Much of that will happen later. Economic reasons. They... Again, we talk about how this is a nation of farmers. Most of them are looking for farm land. In addition to that, we have other interests, such as cotton production by slaveholders, more land needed for ranches, for mining. And additionally, there's this big aspect of gold being discovered in California. And so all these things are economic incentives to keep moving westward. Okay, social reasons a nationalism and pioneer spirit. Land, okay, it was less expensive out in the West than back East, sometimes even free. Additionally, there was the spread of American culture, the removal of Native Americans even further West, and a continued population growth that was not stopping. Immigration would add even more people and be like adding gasoline to the fire. Religious reasons. Manifest destiny often has a theological component that we don't talk about. Theology is the study of God. It's the study of God and religion. And so this is the belief that America were, were kind of God's elect, God's chosen people, and God wanted us to possess these Western lands. And so in particular, one religious group that gets associated with the West okay, is the Mormons, okay, otherwise known as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so what you'll often see is you'll see them called LDS, just simply for Latter-day Saints. And so that term is kind of interchangeable. They had a very difficult time remaining in the U.S. due to religious persecution. And in particular, over their practice at the time, no more, but at the time of polygamy. And so what you would also have is they would move further west and leave the country entirely. They would push handcarts across the Great Plains, over the Rockies, and into an area that was no longer the United States, but was actually Mexico. Okay? And by moving into Mexico, they hoped to be left alone. 
And so they would move into what is today's Utah. And so additionally, a westward expansion would be marked by population explosion, a fertile land in Oregon uh, being a good place to move and uh, get cheap land to, uh, to start your life, and gold again in 1849. So here we can see a map of the Oregon Trail starting out from Independence, Missouri. Again, it's hard to find good images of the Oregon Trail that show both the geographical issues of this trail, but also the political ones. And so here we see the Rocky Mountains. This is an oversimplification. The Rocky Mountains is 70, 70 separate ranges. And so crossing all those is quite treacherous and tricky. And you have to do it before the snowfall of the winter sets in. If you don't get through it before the snow sets in, it, you might get stuck in the mountains. And quite famously, the Donner Party is going to get stuck in the Sierra Nevadas. So additionally, right here, uh, here you can see more of the political aspect of the Oregon Trail. You can see how far Texas actually went up uh, all the way into 1845. And how there were different, different routes that you could kind of take and and again, uh, that could depend on uh, what you were seeing weather-wise on the trail. So finally, we get to the California Gold Rush. Okay, a big aspect of the California Gold Rush that we'll spend more time with later are Chinese immigrants. Okay, Chinese immigrants become a lot of the workforce okay, around uh, this gold rush in 1849. They'll do jobs in mining, in business, okay, and on the railroads. Okay, they were often tasked with the most dangerous jobs of using dynamite and many would die in dynamite accidents on the Western Railroad. Heavily discriminated against, they didn't practice Christianity uh, like most Americans. Additionally, they had picked up some habits from the British, uh, smoking opium in particular, uh, that made them, uh, again, even stand out further. And they would later be banned from all immigration to the United States in the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. And so California gets its nickname today. You can see it over here on this license plate, the Golden State. And so this shows up again and again, okay, in kind of California, if you're paying attention to it. And so California's sports teams are marked, okay, by California's history, just like most American sports teams are. Okay, obviously, you have the San Francisco 49ers a reference to 1849. You can see one of their colors right here and here. Additionally, California's basketball teams, at least the good ones, historically, they both have gold in their logos okay, and in their clothing. And so the Lakers are gold. The Warriors are gold because they're golden state. And in addition, you have this bridge right here called the Golden Gate Bridge. I have students, they look at this and they go, hey, the Golden Gate isn't golden, it's actually red. That's correct. But that bridge goes over where the, where the bay opens up into the Pacific Ocean. And this is the gate you pass through into the Golden State. And so the Golden Gate Bridge represents this, this passage into the Golden State of California. And so here again, we have uh, the gold miners, not many women out there, men never shaved. Okay, quite common to see uh, men with some pretty incredible beards, uh, rarely, rarely bathing, okay, gross. And here we can see later on, okay, how far uh, Manifest Destiny will actually take the United States. Uh, this is going to go much further, and we will talk about more of many of these later on.